So with the post-June cut coming in one month, we are also looking at possible free agents Cincinnati could bring in today. Now, we talked about the undrafted players that they brought in yesterday. They have officially, at this moment in time, signed four unrestricted free agents. They signed a middle linebacker, a guard. They also signed a tight end, and they signed two receivers. So, there are players that are going to be bringing in and out. Again, keep in mind, guys, right now, the roster is going to get to 75 players, right? So, how the roster cuts work is... You start in um, the OTAs, training camp, rookie mini camp, all that stuff with 75 players on your roster. I think it actually goes up to 80, I believe. And then the first preseason game happens. You cut down to, I believe, 70. Then the second preseason game happens. You cut down to 63. Then the third, you cut down to 53 by week one of the season. So there's going to be a lot of players, a lot of names that might not make the active roster, but are on this team until week one of the season. So let's talk about the remaining free agents. Which one should we target? Which one should we look at? All that kind of good stuff. Now, again, I cannot stress this enough. On June 1st, we are going to see, most likely, 15 to 20 players cut on June 1st. Even more than that, depending on what the teams end up doing. We might see players like Hunter Henry... The New England Patriots tight end cut off his off their team. We could see Zach Ertz get cut off the Arizona Cardinals. So for those who are upset and saying, Duke Tobin, Zach Taylor, why didn't you target tight end in this draft? Well, guess what? There's a lot of players who are going to get cut and they possibly could join the Cincinnati Bengals after they get cut. You know, players have already gotten cut already, but there are more players who are going to get cut. This is what we call the second wave of free agency. So the first wave is, you know, when free agency first starts up on, in March, we get crazy, we get insane. This is the second wave. Once June 1st happens and everyone starts getting cut, free agency hits again. And we have a lot of names who, honestly, might still have a lot left in the tank, might be really good players, but simply cost way too much against a cap. So teams let them go. Right now... This is what the running back room looks like in free agency. Again, more we'll add to as time goes on. Zeke Elliott leads off the charge at number one. Then we go Leonard Fournette, which we call him Playoff Lenny. Laid off Lenny. There's a million different Leonard Fournette comments. Kareem Hunt. J.D. McKistick. Mark Ingram. And then we kind of go downhill as we're going down this list. The guys I like from this list is obviously Ezekiel Elliott and it's Kareem Hunt. I think both of these players you could bring in, especially because, again, keep on, this is almost the second layer of free agency here. Both of these players have been sitting around since free agency started. That means their price tag for those these players are absolutely at the bare minimum. They're down low because, again, keep in mind, they want to join a team. They don't want to sit out. They don't want to be a free agent. They want to join a team. But nobody wants them. This is where Cincinnati can scoop in and scoop up one of these players. Now, I've talked about Cream Hunt many times. And I know I've seen a lot of comments of people saying, no, we don't want Cream Hunt after what he did with, you know, situation in KC. We don't need players like that in the locker room. And again, like I said, it is what it is. Um, I think he would be a great addition just because of the talent he would give. With his receiving ability out of the backfield. I think he could completely change up this offense a little bit. And you know contribute on maybe a couple key uh, passes. Or key plays that changes around some ball games. I'm not saying he has to be a starter. And by no stretch of imagination does he. And right now of course we do have Joe Mixon. And then number two is Travion Williams. And then number three now is probably going to be a mixer. Of either Chase Brown. Or it's going to be a mixer of my man uh, Chris Evans. But it's very possible you could see Kareem Hunt, you know, maybe a rotational guy, come in on third down rolls and get the job done. Now, what's kind of funny is I've seen more people call Zeke Elliott washed up than I have Kareem Hunt. Which is ironic to me because Kareem Hunt's actually uh, the same age as Zeke Elliott. But Zeke playoff... Oh, okay, no, there's no playoff Zeke on there. He was a cowboy. They don't know what playoffs are. Zeke Elliott, though. 
Why do I like him? Well, first off, the reason why I like him is because of his pass blocking ability. I also think he'll he can come in and become a backup running back for almost league minimum. And I I think it's a really good spot where they could get him. And again, he can pass block, and that's his biggest thing here: pass blocking and receiving out of the backfield. He's a nice complementary piece to Joe Mixon. Uh, Zach Taylor made it clear that Joe Mixon is the future of the Cincinnati Bengals. And unless the legal situation goes, you know, haywire, it looks like he will be the leading player for the Cincinnati Bengals. But again, if the, you know, the situation with his legal case goes opposite, he might not be. But at this moment in time, he will be the leading rusher. So, with that being said, Zeke could be a nice complimentary piece. I'm not saying 1,000% I love Zeke, though. Because, again, I also believe... I don't think he's going to go out there and put up 1,000 yards. And I'm really on the... And I, you guys probably know this on the channel. You probably see me say this a lot. I'm really on Travion Williams' bandwagon, man. I am on Travion Williams' bandwagon. This guy spent this whole offseason training, getting bigger, looking better playing better. He's isolating himself because he doesn't want any drama. He doesn't want any problems. He is doing everything possible to earn this starting job. And if it was up to me, I'd say don't sign a running back. I want to see Travion get his chance in the sun. I really do. So I'm going to say no running back because I want to see Travion, uh, you know, step up. But again, you also got to remember you have to running back in the fifth round. So he's going to get his opportunity too. Wide receiver, there's not... Really, any receiver I would want on this team at this point. I mean, I know Kenny Galladay, uh, the man who stole all that money from New York. <laughs> he stole so much money from the Giants because he got paid so much money to, to do nothing. Um, but at this point, there's no reason to get a receiver. I mean, let's be honest. Right now, you got T, Chase, Boyd, Charlie Jones now is coming in at number four. You also still got Trent Irwin, picked up some unrestricted free agents, two receivers unrestricted free agents, also drafted uh, uh, Andre in the s sixth round. Yeah, sixth round. So you have a lot of receivers to work with at this point. There's no reason to talk about that. Tight end is a cesspool. It is ugly. It is disgusting. This tight end group now for free agency is really, really bad. And, you know, I know this is a big concern for us because if you look at the end of the day, if Irv Smith Obviously, he wants it healthy. Knock on wood, he stays healthy. But at the same time, though, if he can't stay healthy, Drew Sample is your starting tight end on this roster. And Drew Sample is not going to do much of anything for the Cincinnati Bengals here. So then you're looking out for another tight end and trying to figure something out. Um, they did not draft a tight end. They didn't. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, but there will be a second wave of free agency. Like I said before, Zach Earth will hit free agency. Um, we also could see Hunter Henry hit free agency and a couple other guys. But yeah, it's one of those situations where you look at it and you're like, wait, hold up. Who's going to be our tight end without Irv Smith? If Irv Smith goes down, there isn't an option. So it is what it is at the end of the day. This tight end group right here is a cesspool. I wouldn't go for any of these guys. I don't really like any of these tight ends, to be honest. Um, so I'm either looking at undrafted free agent players or... Uh, again, like I said, they did pick up one guy who really wasn't that great. Um, but they also could possibly look at free agency after June 1st and see who is available then. There will be some names available then. All right, let's talk about right tackle. Uh, obviously not right, left tackle, but we have right tackles. These are right tackles available, but it's always weird because the way you want to sort this is by just going to offensive tackle, um, which is just right here, which is always the better option because... Then it shows you some players who are just considered tackles who could play right or left and not really, you know, in any way determine what they need to do. Uh, here is a player I will continue to preach about is Isaiah Wynn. Um, now, I don't think right tackle is a position that, again, Cincinnati did not target in the draft. I don't think it's a position that they're really caring about too much. Um, at the end of the day, you know, they would have, if they cared about it, they would have drafted it in the draft. They have Collins, who claims he will be back by week one and healthy. You also still got Jonah Williams. They tried to trade him, did not work out with Jacksonville. So that means, yeah, he's going to be back again. Jackson Carmen has spent the whole offseason getting better, uh, buffing himself up, looking better. He's ready to go. He wants to become the starter. And you also got Cody Ford. So I don't think tackle is something that they're going to 
focused on even in the second wave of free agency. I think this is something that they're probably going to say, listen, at the end of the day, if like a crazy name is out there and we can get him and possibly go ahead and cut, you know, try to trade Jonah, try to trade Jonah again, but this time just say whatever, we'll take whatever we can get for Jonah, then possibly, but I just don't think they're going to really focus on tackle in any way possible. Um, for a defensive line, I really doubt they're going to focus on anything defensive lineman wise. Uh, especially with the fact they just got Miles Murphy. Um, they're really probably just not focused on that. Yannick Aguakwe is still out there. He's another name we talked about before. Really solid edge rusher. Can do a little bit of everything except do not put him at linebacker. He sucks at linebacker. But he's a really good uh, pass rusher. But I think Miles Murphy is Yannick Aguakwe. Younger and costs a lot less money. So they're not really going to focus on that or go after that position. Um, cornerback safety. Let's go look at that. So we got cornerback right here. We still got Eli Apple out here, uh, right here. We still got Trey Flowers out here. Could they bring back either of these guys? Um, it, it is always possible they bring players back like Eli Apple or you know Trey Flowers on league minimum deals as rotational people pieces maybe for the preseason you know kind of just give DJ Turner a little bit more of like you know not competition but to get him more into the rotation purposes um but I highly 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 doubt they really look too far into adding any other cornerbacks in free agency period um cornerbacks in free agency still have there are still some pretty decent options Rock Yasin is still available. Again, Trey Flowers, Eli Apple. There's still a lot of good cornerbacks that could get picked up. And again, a lot more would join them with the second wave of free agency. But I think once the season kicks off and we got Cheeto back, we got Mike Hilton, got Cam Taylor Britt. You also got, again, DJ Turner, Sidney Jones. I don't think they're really going to be focused too much on cornerback. Um, but for preseason, when Cheeto is out, keep in mind, Cheeto is going to be out for preseason. Uh, that might be where you bring in someone like, you know, I don't know, uh, Eli Apple or Trey Flowers, right? Just for the preseason games. They get more game tape to show off to people, and you also get, you know, maybe they end up working out, and you work out a small contract for them. But if any of these guys come in at corner, they're going to come in for league minimum, and that's it. This is not a, oh, we're going to give them a huge contract. No. It's a league minimum. Good thing is, though, all of these guys right here, all cheap as molasses right now because they've been on free agency for a while. Marcus Peters, I think he's going back to Baltimore in the end uh, because basically there's a lot of Raven sources are saying that he's going back to Baltimore um, because of the fact that he's going to go for very cheap. Uh, he hit free agency because he won a lot of money. Nobody signed him. Baltimore will take him back. Uh, so imagine Joe Mixon is going to get punched in the gut again. And T's probably going to have a dirty hit against him because that's what Marcus Peters does. I don't like Marcus Peters, okay? That's pretty obvious. All right, safety position. Um, cesspool. It really is a cesspool at this point for safety position. It happens every year. Again, free agency, wave two, we'll hit and we'll get some more players. But at this moment in time, it's really just a cesspool. And I don't think they're going to really go out to any of these guys. They're all old, old, old players, so... They're not really interested. And again, keep in mind, you know, we have Nick Scott at the starting free safety with now Jordan Battle, our third round picks, a rotation back and forth. Uh, Dax Hill on the left-hand side of strong safety. They could look toward another strong safety maybe for, again, rotational purposes. Um, and that wouldn't be a bad idea in any stretchy imagination. So maybe they do something like that. But other than that, again, like I said, they're at a point now with this team where, again, keep in mind, this team is a Super Bowl team at this point. This roster is ready to go to go win a Super Bowl. There's not really many pieces they ha are going to have to fill, right, at this moment in time. So there's not many players that you're, you know, you're desperately going out there to try to get. But if a big name does hit free agency with Wave 2, it's very possible they go out there and, you know, get aggressive with a certain player to go after him. But, guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.